Nogatuck River Greenway, America's Great Outdoors. It is not recommended that one drink, bathe, fish, or even fall in these waters by accident. The results could be physically dangerous. When I was a, a teenager, many, many years ago, we wanted nothing to do with the Nogatuck River just because of the smell. This river was not only so polluted, but it was also dangerous to come down to because of industrial debris, broken glass, needles. When I was a kid, uh, we weren't allowed to go into the river. It was dirty. It oftentimes changed colors from the different chemicals that were being put in it. In 1950s, uh, the Connecticut Department of Public Health did a survey of this river and couldn't find any living organism in the river. Between the sewage and the industrial waste, this river was dead. And then that was capped off by a horrible flood here we had in 1955. Particularly with the 55 flood, all the riparian habitat was destroyed. And of course the river was so polluted there was no wildlife here. After the flood subsided, people decided what they needed was protection from the river. Okay, they didn't look at it as a resource. And the flood control walls were built. And once those walls were completed, the river disappeared. Perhaps no river tells a greater story of restoration than the Naugatuck River. Visionary people in the Naugatuck Valley refused to let the river die. Because of their efforts, the Naugatuck River has been reborn. We started with the Naugatuck Valley Chapter Trout Unlimited in 1984. It was one of the worst polluted rivers in the United States. Nobody was paying any attention to it, so we worked closely with the DEP. And then in about 1992, the Northwestern chapter trot unlimited. They started working on the northern half. The state said, we will not stop state fish in the river, but if you wish to buy the fish yourself and stock them, we said yes. We figured if one-tenth of the fish survived, they would be some of the hardiest fish ever. And then we had the Nocturne River watershed calling more attention to the river. So between the three groups, we've had 120 different conservation projects. And in more recent years, there have been other groups and, and people coming along. I stopped fishing seven years ago. I was fly fishing right here, and I kept on getting caught on shopping carts. And I said, it's, that's done. I am not going to touch the fly rod until these things are gone. So I went to the city of Waterbury. If we gather all the debris from the river, you won't have to do anything other than take it away. There's nothing we haven't pulled out of this river, including the kitchen sink. Sewage treatment plants have been built and upgraded, and now we've achieved water quality standards. We've got um, fish coming back. There are no more fish kills. It doesn't smell anymore. And with this renewed uh, water quality in the river comes an opportunity to restore runs of native species of migratory fish. Lots of fish that are coming up from the ocean and they need to spawn in our rivers. Working with power companies and municipalities, the Connecticut Department of Energy and Environmental Protection built fish ladders and removed seven dams along the Naugatuck, opening more than 26 miles of fish habitat. Going from zero species of fish, we have 42 species of fish in this river system at this particular point in time. By bringing the fish back, we also bring back ospreys and eagles and black crowned night herons. This river intrinsically is so beautiful that the wildlife from great blue herons, black crowned night herons, little green herons, all of this is watchable. We had a public meeting last night and the public was just standing up cheering this and telling us how much this river has changed, how great it is to see the wildlife. As water quality improved, people began to envision parks, trails, and boat launches linking the riverside communities, a lateral greenway that would protect the river and create access for people. 
I like the surprises that you find when you get out of the car, you walk down the bank, you stand by the river, and you realize what a beautiful place this is. It's as beautiful as any river in Vermont or Colorado where we think of, oh, those are the places you have to go to find beautiful rivers. In fact, they're right here. We have beautiful places to go in our backyard. Um, right now, it's a little hard to find, and that's the purpose of a greenway, is to make it easy for people to find and enjoy and protect the river that's close to home. A lot of people don't know that this actually exists. A lot of people don't know the beauty of Torrington and what we hold and what there is. And so our mission, I think, is to try to get people informed and get them to know that this does, this does exist and this is here for uh, recreation and, and walking. I'd like to be able to like see the Naugatuck, you know, like all different parts, like the branch over here where it's, you know, kind of like a waterfall. It's just cool, you know. It's just really nice to uh, that we have this here. You know, a lot of towns don't have a river like this running through it and the opportunities that a river like this has for the community. If we can build it a quarter of a mile at a time or a few hundred yards at a time, that's the way we'll do it. So it'll be years before it's completely done, but there's lots of it you can enjoy right now. The Naugatuck River communities have been looking at greenway opportunities for more than 15 years now. And we uh, share our vision for greenways, looking for opportunities to link already protected open space and look for opportunities to uh, maybe protect some additional riverfront land. But the towns are the drivers. The communities in the Naugatuck River Valley, I think are unique because they're, they already work together. And I think the Greenway will just be one more way to link the towns, bring people back to the river. Each town creates its own vision of a Greenway trail, sometimes combining historical sites with natural trails. You know, this, this river was uh, kind of a silicon valley 120 years ago. There was a lot of production here. They were making the, the goods that, that were going across the country with the settlers. And that's part of the heritage that's here in this valley. Our town's named after Seth Thomas. They did great things with clocks. We've set up an area called the Clock Walk downtown, which is a, a one mile loop around town that is on the sidewalks that showcases the history of the town. So not only do you have the nature or cycling, but you also have a connection to a past that I think is very important to people and you can bring that connection to people through the Greenway. We wanted access to the river and started uh, apply for a small grant to have a timber staircase to the river and it became uh, an exciting project. We formed uh, Citizens for Tomorrow's Downtown uh, applying for grants getting donations from local contractors um, for the bricks for this. People were volunteering on weekends to build a staircase. Well, it transformed Main Street, which was a two-lane highway on both sides, north and southbound. More of a quaint New England village with the, the lamppost, the walkway, the trees, the green. And it just made it a nice place for families to come and walk downtown as they hopefully going to visit some of the shops that are here. Make it more friendly for foot traffic. Once people started coming down here realizing how beautiful it is, you forget, you know, you forget the past of this river and you see how really nice it is now. And I mean, it's quite a spectacle if you're walking up and down a greenway path or jogging or riding your bike and you're riding along the side of kayakers that are out there kayaking. Um, they're guaranteed a magnet to get people down to the river. Getting the public down to appreciate it will do big things for the river. There's not one idea about what this greenway should be. It's, it's certainly not the National Park Service telling anybody what it should be. Each town knows where the trails are, knows how they'd like to use them, so it'll be a town-by-town -town basis. Waterbury's urban landscape poses unique challenges to designing a greenway. You know, with an old mill city, the banks of a river are usually built up. There's not a lot of space left. So it's been said that this greenway segment through the city of Waterbury is one of the most challenging greenway segments ever. There are places where we have no slope to the river and we'll be cantilevering out and doing all kinds of great engineering things to make sure we get that path in. So it's a challenge phase by phase to get the seven miles done. Even though Waterbury's name is Waterbury because of our links to the Naugatuck, the river has been pretty much closed off to the residents of Waterbury. There are few places in the city where we can actually get to the river. So this greenway 
connects people back to their heritage, um, back to our, our namesake, really. And that, that, to me, is perhaps the most exciting. It's really a gift back to the people. All of a sudden, people were back on top of the flood control wall, except it was no longer a flood control wall. Instead of being a barrier to a river, all of a sudden, people were up on top, looking out and looking down and seeing a, a river that wasn't polluted anymore, that now had become a natural resource once again. The Greenway so definitely supports healthy living here in the valley with uh, so many people pre-diabetic today, millions of people pre-diabetic in our country. Youth obesity is an issue. It's an absolutely wonderful place uh, for us to be able to expand our programming, get the community healthy, get the community active. Um, it's, it's a wonderful asset for us. I'm just excited to see uh, the Greenways connect uh, from Torrington down to Derby the best that we can so that people can take off on full day excursions uh, and enjoy safely. I think we're fortunate in Derby. We took the punt of the flood and everything else, but we were the first ones, I think, to capitalize on what this could become. And I think Derby is the, the model right now for what everybody else can do with this. Explore the Naugatuck is an event. Let's ride the Greenway. 56 miles in one day for the cyclists, 12 press events, uh, pull all the partners together and celebrate what we have um, and envision what we see happening in the future. We've come a long way and if we work together that we can have something that all the generations can use in perpetuity. There will be public areas, boat launches, uh, places for art, uh, and all kinds of efforts to have people take advantage of what this means to live in this community and be close to a river. I think this is one of the greatest environmental cleanup stories in the entire country. And it took the Greenway to get people to realize what has what taken place here. And I, I think this bike ride is a symbol of what is eventually going to happen all up and down this river. It's wonderful to recognize this beautiful Naugatuck River Valley. It's a gem. Oliver Wendell Holmes says it's more than an amenity, it's a treasure, and we should treasure it. Ride, walk, kayak, explore, and celebrate the Naugatuck River Greenway. To learn where and how to help complete the Naugatuck River Greenway, please visit naugatuckriver.net for more information and free maps.